Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today is going to be a very detailed tutorial on this look right here. I created this like really graphic, really just avant-garde look in my personal opinion using the Juvia's Place Saharan palette. This is a palette that has remained largely unused in my collection. I actually haven't really been dipping into this palette nearly as much as I should be, but I decided to change that today and I decided to come up with like a very very, I guess, like graphic and dramatic take on like a warm tone look because I have been doing a lot of cool tone looks lately and I plan to do a lot more because I love doing like cool tone looks as well. But I kind of decided that I wanted to sort of like dip my toes into some warm tones and create something that was like really uh, harsh and really like just striking but with this palette right here. So I was able to create this look with this palette and I actually was going into a lot of like detail about like the process and the techniques that I used and the different methodology behind everything. So if you want to learn how to create this look right here and if you want to see me use this palette, then of course, keep on watching. I was not able to find my hairbrush when I sat down to film this video, which is why my hair currently looks like a rat's nest, which happens in every single video, even when I do have my hairbrush. Aren't you guys happy that I'm not a hair blogger? Because um, if I was a hair blogger, uh, we would have some weird videos. You guys would be like laughing at me, you know, because like this is what you would be getting if I was a hair blogger. Seriously though, you know. So I'm gonna be using this palette right here, the Saharan by Juvia's Place. I did my Juvia's Place uh, video, I think it was like a few weeks ago, and in that video I showed you guys my very uh, small Juvia's Place palette collection and I basically talked to you guys, like I kind of ranked the palettes from most used, well no, from least used to most used, and in that video this was pretty much the least used palette. And um, I was thinking, well I probably should, uh, you know, create a few videos with this and see where that takes me because I think that I need to start using this palette more because I did put down money for it and I need to use it. You know, it's a good quality palette. It's just that, you know, like there are what, 12 shades in here and sometimes it can get a little bit tricky to come up with like interesting looks in my personal opinion using this palette and I want to challenge myself to try and come up with some looks. So I'm gonna be using a tiny, tiny detail brush and I'm gonna pick up this like beautiful, like white, bright color. And this is gonna go into my brow bone as a brow bone highlight. I'm currently in that like little phase of like wearing brow bone highlight like all the time. Sometimes I like to not wear brow bone highlight because I get lazy. Other times I love to wear it because it literally can like make your eyebrows look so much more snatched and so much more beautiful. I'm going to be using a really stiff brush to apply it. I'm actually using this one right here. I'm just gonna dip it into this particular shade, really work it into the brush. I'm gonna take my compact and see what happens. You guys know if you have been watching my channel lately how like intensely curious I have been about different shapes and different ways of doing eyeshadow. Like I feel like there's so many different like shapes to explore with eyeshadow that are a little bit unconventional and that's kind of what I've been doing lately, especially today. I'm going to try and use the black shade in here. I know, I might actually regret this. We will see what happens. I'm gonna be using a little bit of a stiffer, smudging kind of brush, and I'm going to dip it into this black. I do remember this black being quite a good quality, and this is going to go into my outer corner. I was able to create a pretty good, like promising shape on this eye, but this eye is kind of an issue for me because 
Uh, my right hand is not my dominant hand, so I'm kind of encountering some problems, but I'm just gonna try and make these two eye looks look kinda similar. Um, I'm going to put on some music, I'm gonna get into my uh, zen state, and hopefully we'll be able to pull something out of this crossing my fingers, crossing my toes, that this will be able to happen. We will see. Okay, so this was looking kind of interesting, kind of avant-garde, definitely avant-garde. Uh, I don't know if it's like something that I like so far, we will see, but hopefully this will turn out into something a little bit more promising because I kind of like where this is going, but at the same time, I want to do something more. So I'm going to grab this like beautiful metallic pink color and this is going to go right um, kind of on top overlapping the black but also like in that blank space so kind of between those two areas I'm just gonna apply this pink color with my finger And then I'm going to go back in with the residue left on that smudging brush and just diffuse the edges of that pink and black so we can get some like more depth. I think I'm also moving this into the center of my eyelid as well. So hopefully we can get some kind of like a promising look with this. I think that it's looking a little bit better now. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some glitter glue and I'm just gonna apply it like right between the coral and the metallic pink shade. And the reason I'm using the glitter glue at this stage is because now I want to apply uh, some shadow into that area. And the reason I didn't use glitter glue for the pink is because, I mean, I want the pink to be vibrant, but I already know that since I'm applying it on top of a sticky base that it's gonna be vibrant. But then again, I don't want the pink to be the center of attention because I kind of like anticipated a second color going in um, to kind of like just take the spotlight, if that makes any sense. And I wanted the pink to support that color, but not to overshadow it. I sound crazy, but that's kind of like my mentality and how I was thinking. But I'm gonna go in with this like beautiful like greenish gold color that I absolutely love. And this is going to go right on top of that glitter glue. If you're new here, then you probably don't know this, but I absolutely love applying certain shadows with my fingers because I just don't really have much patience for using a brush when I can just use my fingers to get even more intensity and like pigmentation and impact. So that's why so many of the times you will see me use my fingers because I just prefer that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this brush that we used for the coral shade. I'm gonna dip it back into this coral shade and I'm going to to apply this coral shade specifically on the border between the gold and the coral because I really want the coral to sort of overlap the gold a little bit to sort of like blend into it and I don't know kind of like frame it in like an interesting way so that's why I'm just gonna pack this coral on top of the edges of the gold to really create like a more blended and a more diffused effect. That is looking a lot better right there in my personal opinion. So now what I wanna do is I want to work on my lower lash line. I'm gonna take a pencil brush, okay? And I'm just going to dip it into, I'm trying to think. I think I want to first use this color right up here, that coral shade, and I'm just gonna apply this all over my lower lash line.
I think I also want to dip into that black. I'm just going to use the same brush because you know what? Who cares? And I'm just going to use this to sort of connect the um, outer corner of my top eyelid to my bottom lash line. I'm gonna do this by lightly applying the black to the outer part of my lower lash line and just brushing it towards the center bit. But you will notice that I actually use more pressure as I'm working in the outer part of my lower lash line than the center bit because I do want this part to have more coral than this part because this part is the part that I wanna be the most dark and the most intense. But then as I move into the inner portion of my lower lash line, I want it to be a little bit more bright and I want there to be more coral in that area. For a little bit of something extra in the lower lash line, I'm just gonna go in with a blue eyeliner, a really intense one, and I'm just gonna pop this into my lower waterline. For some added intensity, I'm going to be going in with a um, inner corner highlight and I think that I'll be using this silver color from ColourPop. This is a super shock shadow and this particular shade is the shade Liberty. I'm just going to take it with my finger and I'm just going to really apply it quite intensely into my inner corner. For some extra kapow boom boom, I'm just gonna go in with this really white bright color that we used earlier. And I'm just gonna like just press it right on top of that silver to really give my inner corner some like pop. I feel like that is looking absolutely beautiful. So I'm just gonna go and do the exact same steps for my other eye. As you guys may already know, I absolutely love doing my um, inner corner highlight and also sort of dragging it into my lower lash line. I feel like that way I'm able to tie in the look very well because sometimes my lower lash line is a completely different uh, color theme from my top and I feel like applying the inner corner highlight to my bottom lash line and my um, top eyelid sort of ties the look in together so it's just like kind of just looks a little bit better in my personal opinion. However, sometimes whenever I have like um, a water liner or a liner in my water line, sometimes it can get a little bit swallowed up. So usually I just like to go in with the same liner and just correct that specific area and just make sure we get some blue back in that area, which is what I'm doing right now. The irony with my makeup channel is that I spend so much time like perfecting and like doing like little things to my eyeshadow sometimes. And then when I go to like my face and my lips, I'm just like, oh, okay, done now. You know, like I just like literally take like five minutes or less to do my face and my lips. But then my eyes, like I have been filming this for 35 minutes and I've only been doing eyes. That's how like much I'm obsessed with like just working at it and just like making sure that it looks absolutely beautiful, you know? I think that for my face, I don't really want to do foundation all over my face, but I do want to cover up this like little red spot that I find incredibly irritating. So I'm just gonna pack some foundation on it, sort of like stipple it in with my fingers. And I feel like that actually was a little bit too much. If I'm being completely honest, like this is way too much. So I'm just gonna fix it by taking like this buffing brush and sort of like really just um, blend this foundation into the skin and sort of diffuse it around. Because I mean, my skin is pretty good and it usually isn't this good, uh, but I have been like, um, I feel like eating better and I also have been like doing some treatments that have been clearing up my skin. Who knows, later on in the month, my skin will probably go back to looking you know, not so good. But for now, I'm just thinking that like, even if this look is super dramatic and like, you know, just, you know, 
I feel like I'm okay with like not wearing foundation on my skin, but I do want to cover this specific spot up. Tell you what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do my, um, my mascara, my uh, lashes, and also my face makeup, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk you guys through what I'm doing for the lips. Okay guys, I'm going to be using a lip pencil first. This is the Huda Beauty Lip Contour in the shade Vixen. I'm just going to apply this to the outer perimeters of my mouth. That sounds so weird, but you know, you know what I mean, right? You do? I hope you do. And then on top, I'm gonna to be using a ColourPop lippy stick. This one is in the shade Chateau. This is looking a little bit more interesting. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go in with a gloss. This is the Jordana Cosmic Glow Holographic Lip Gloss. And I'm just gonna press it right on top of this really bold lip because I do want uh, this lip to be a little bit glossy, but I'm just gonna make sure that I'm only pressing the gloss like right into the center of my lips so that's a little bit more uh, concentrated. So my friends, that is pretty much it for this makeup look right here. I for one love how it turned out. I think that this uh, palette, Ju the Juvia's Place Saharan palette, is one of those palettes that is so good quality. Like, I mean, I love these shadows. They perform brilliantly. The mattes and the metallics are amazing with and without glitter glue, by the way, which is great. But I feel like for a long time, this palette has sort of been left unused by me because of like the different... Um, issues that I tend to have with coming up with a good uh, look with this color store because of this color store can be a little bit confusing and yeah I'm looking at this and now that I've sort of like dipped into this palette again I am now inspired to use some more of these shades to create some more looks and to hopefully like just work at this palette a little bit more you will definitely be seeing this palette on my channel in the future this is just one of many videos that I plan to create using this palette because I really want to try and use this palette more and I have a feeling that a lot of you guys might own this palette or might own something similar so I don't know maybe you guys will maybe you guys will enjoy this type of video as well like more videos using this palette um, in particular because it's like such a like a tiny palette but it does have so much promise I mean you have cool tones and you have warm tones of course like for example these two colors and this color I mean I don't think I'll be using those colors that much if at all because they're kind of neutral but maybe I can work with like this color and mix it in with this color Maybe I can try and implement this color with this color and vice versa. I mean, I don't know. We can see. We, we shall see. Maybe I can like join this in with some other palettes in my collection and see what happens. But yes, I would love to experiment with this palette a little bit more. I feel like I can create so many different looks with it. And I just need to like get a little bit more creative and think outside the box. So thank you guys so much for watching until the end of this video. I do hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Bye.